Rising tensions after a U.S. Navy destroyer shot down three cruise missiles and several drones launched by Iranian-backed Houthi rebels in Yemen. For the first time, the U.S. taking military action to defend Israel. The Pentagon saying the missiles were launched from Yemen northward, potentially towards Israel. We cannot say for certain what these missiles and drones were targeting, but they were launched from Yemen, heading north along the Red Sea, potentially towards targets in Israel. These missile launches come as the U.S. is bolstering its firepower in the region, a second carrier strike group soon joining U.S. warships already in the Mediterranean, and additional fighter aircraft also being sent, all meant as a deterrent. By posturing these U.S. naval assets and advanced fighter aircraft in the region, we aim to send a strong message intended to deter a wider conflict to bolster regional stability and, of course, to make it clear that we will protect and defend our national security interests. The Houthi rebel leader had just warned the U.S. last week against intervening in the Hamas-Israeli conflict, threatening missile and drone strikes. U.S. defense officials confirmed to Fox News that a base housing U.S. troops in Syria was attacked by drones this morning. No injuries have been reported. It comes as the U.S. Bolter, bolsters its presence in the region. Two aircraft carrier groups have been deployed, joining fighter jets that have just arrived. The Pentagon is also sending more missile defense systems. And Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin has about 100 more troops on ready-to-deploy orders, adding to the 2,000 troops already on 24 hours' notice to deploy to the Middle East. Meanwhile, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell is connecting the dots, warning of the larger, looming threat to the United States. The world is more endangered today than it has been in my lifetime. You have to respond to conditions that actually exist, that are a threat to the United States. The Iranians are a threat to us as well. And so this is an emergency. It's an emergency that we step up and deal with this axis of evil, China, Russia, Iran, because it's an immediate threat to the United States. Uh, the U.S. on high alert this morning as agencies issue a new warning on the possible terror threat here at home. Writing in a joint bulletin, quote, loan offenders inspired by or reacting to the ongoing Israel-Hamas conflict pose the most likely threat to Americans. Here with a reaction, former FBI TDAC Deputy Director Scott Sweeto. Scott, thanks for joining us this morning. If you wouldn't well, mind, you. explain to us what this bulletin is and what effect it causes. So law enforcement obviously puts out bulletins on a pretty regular basis, but sometimes they get more attention than others. And this is certainly one of those times because we're in the middle of a, a very hot situation in the Middle East where there have already been actions that have taken place. And law enforcement is concerned that those might pop up here in greater frequency and cause some real problems. You know, I'm looking at the verbiage, and if this is verbatim, it says lone offenders. I find that interesting because we often hear lone wolf or homegrown or sleeper cell, and I guess this kind of encompasses all of those options? It does. Uh, lone wolf is really just another way of saying lone offender. Yeah. And it's, it's really law enforcement's way of saying that they think it could be individuals maybe as opposed to more organized groups of people. When we look at our border, the folks that cross, we've had uh, not high value targets, but people on list that have been able to cross the border and apprehended. We have to assume there are those that haven't. Is a, is a domestic law enforcement policy like this coordinating with intelligence agencies uh, to intercept any type of communication? It might be a lone offender, but they're coordinating with terrorists overseas. Is that a big part of this as well? It is, but uh, you, you have other dimensions too. So certainly we're concerned about the threat that might come from overseas that might come into the country illegally or already be here uh, through some other mechanism. But in addition to these people that might come from external uh, places, you have these kind of homegrown people who might get spun up uh, and try to launch attacks on their own because they believe yeah. in the ideology. I know the biggest way to deter or detect is to look at verbiage used online, threats, things of that nature. 
We've sat here for a week and reported on college students celebrating Hamas being absolutely evil, using chants like from the river to the sea, which essentially means to eradicate Israel. How do you start to dissect when the rhetoric, when the, when the, when the median rhetoric is already that violent, how do you start to dissect who's going too far or who's indicating that they may want to act? Because it seems to me like every person out there chanting those things is a potential lone offender. Yeah, obviously we have free speech here yeah. as Americans, uh, even things that, that may be repugnant to other people, but where you have to separate the lawful free speech from something that's an indicator of an attack or a threat, that really gets to be difficult because law enforcement has tools where they can lawfully monitor social media, listen to phone calls through court orders, but uh, that's a high bar to get to. Yeah. So you have to be able to pick out the ones that are real threats from the ones that are just saying awful things. Is this bulletin reactionary, precautionary? Should it cause a sense of scare for us or is this more standard operating procedure for, some, for a situation like this? So it, uh, it hits elements of all three of those things. Fair enough. But I, I, I can tell you it, it absolutely is precautionary because uh, these bulletins, because they come out more often, uh, they risk getting kind of lost in the clutter. So to put out something like this that has very specific information, I think is, is a way to alert local law enforcement, but also the traveling public that they have to be alert of their surroundings and be aware uh, because attacks are potential. And now the US military is facing its worst recruitment crisis in history. Just look at the numbers. They're failing to meet recruitment targets. The signs have been there for a while, but this year the numbers are particularly bad. The Army is expected to fall short by 15,000 recruits, the Navy by 10,000, and the Air Force by 3,000 recruits. So all three branches are falling short by around 28,000 people. This is the world's third largest army we're talking about. A dip in the numbers could hinder their defenses. But what explains the shortfall? The biggest factor is Gen Z. They're simply not interested in military service. The Pentagon even conducted a survey about this. It talked to young adults. Only 9% of them said they would consider service. That's the lowest level since 2007. Only 9%. Military leaders say they're struggling to hit targets. That's because most of the potential recruits do not meet their standards. Data shows that young people are simply not interested. For them, serving a nation is not just about joining the army. There are other avenues, like social service or political activism, and it turns out they're more inclined towards that. And even if they want to serve, many fail to qualify. They do not make the cut when it comes to physical and mental health. Most of them are overweight. This is according to John Hopkins. It talks about Americans between 18 and 25 years of age. More than half of them are overweight, so they cannot enlist. Plus, a record number of young people have mental disorders. They seek therapy. In the US, that's immediate disqualification from service. So even if Gen Z wants, they cannot serve, and that's saying something. So what's the army doing about this? Well, they're not changing the rules for now, but they're venturing into the world of TikTok and Discord with videos like these. Get ready with me for a day in service, or a video that says, know your army. Basically, the US military is trying everything. Several branches have also increased recruitment payouts more incentives to lure people. It hasn't really worked yet, but there's something that has. A recent decision by the US Air Force, and listen to this, they have relaxed rules on hand and neck tattoos, also on past marijuana use. You will not be disqualified for that if you've used it in the past. And this has boosted numbers. Maybe that's the key. 